everyone. Um, you know, obviously a, a very disappointing end uh, to what was a, a great regular season and a great playoff series, which obviously didn't get the result we wanted. Uh, so extremely disappointed. We're not going to make any excuses. I thought our players battled hard. I thought that they played well and they lost to a great, uh, a great hockey team. Uh, as players, management and ownership, we share in everybody's uh, frustration uh, in not getting the job done. Uh, certainly, as we look forward to next year, uh, there's always going to be new phases. Uh, that being said, uh, we will not be making changes just simply for the sake of saying that we made changes. Uh, with that, I think that, uh, you know, Kyle built a, a very good hockey team. I think he made excellent adjustments along the way. And I think uh, Sheldon is an excellent coach. Um, you know, as we look forward to next year and getting to work toward next year, I think it's important to sort of state that, that I see both of them as being uh, extremely important in getting us to the next level so that uh, when we do approach next year and we do come back, that we are ready to take that next step. As Kyle had said to the players today, the work for next year begins right now. And I look forward to getting to work with Kyle and Sheldon for next season. Kyle. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, obviously, we're here today um, at a point where we are proud of, of the progress that was made during the year. However, we weren't able to take the key step and the most important step uh, at this time of the year. And, um, you know, beginning essentially Saturday night right at the final buzzer, you begin to uh, get ready to get to work and get into the off season right away to ensure that uh, we aren't in this position again as we move forward and that we're doing everything we can um, to surround our coaching staff and players and support staff with everything that they need uh, to continue to push and break through. And uh, that will be my job and our management team's job during the off season. Um, I think the regular season gives me great hope for the team and the way that we competed in that series against Tampa uh, gives me uh, further belief in the team. However, uh, we need to take those uh, next steps and uh, that's what all of our attention and all of our effort will be put into uh, and that started on Saturday night at 10.05. I'll start. open it up for questions. Thank you. We'll start with Terry on the side here. Question for Kyle. Um, do you do you come back to the same core then? Uh, do you keep uh, knocking on that door or do you anticipate more changes than just some of the things you did last year? I think, Terry, the way that, uh, that we'll approach the offseason is, is the way that we, we always have, uh, which is I don't view it as you know, just the core four. I, I never refer to uh, the team in, in those exact terms. I look at the, at the core group uh, as a whole and try to determine what's the best way that we can move ahead with uh, trying to accomplish our goal and reaching our potential. And if there's a way that we can improve the team and, and become a better team, then we'll do that. But going back to what, uh, what Shani had said, I don't think that we want to start just making changes that may be lateral or make us uh, inferior as a team just to say that we changed something. And I think in these moments, it's easy to say that you believe at the beginning of a year. Uh, it's easy to say that you believe when you want or that you always have. I think in these moments where um, you have not reached the potential that everyone knows that you have and that you especially internally know that you have, that's when true belief is measured. And uh, I do believe in the group. That said, I think with every uh, off season, no matter what the end result was, we would look at the entire group and we'll do that in the coming weeks and determine how we want to move ahead. And just to follow up to that, uh, you have a long relationship with Jack Campbell. Uh, Sorry, so I didn't I missed you, the beginning the, of the The follow-up, uh, okay. you have a long relationship with Jack Campbell, Kyle. We all know that. Uh, is it a priority to get him back under contract for next year and beyond for you? Yeah, I, I don't uh, – I do have a long relationship with him. I, I think that I would put Jack in the same uh, grouping in, in terms of uh, he, Ilya Mikheyev, Mark Giordano, Andrzej Kasha, that are unrestricted free agents, Ilya Labushkin. Uh, in that we'll sit down as a group here in, in the coming uh, days and weeks and then uh, Brandon will, will uh, get to work in speaking with their representatives, get a, an idea of what expectations are. We'll begin to look at the marketplace and then make our decisions from there. Josh. 
for either of you guys, it, it, in, in, a, I mean, in, in a vacuum, it's, it's a great season. You know, 115 points, lots of franchise records, lots of personal records. Lost the two-time defending cup champs in, in, two game, in seven games, but, but it's not a vacuum. You know, it's, whether it's five, six years, whether it's 18 years, whether it's 55 years. How, how do you balance the knowing that you're close, but also knowing that you, this group couldn't push it over the line? I, I, what I would say to that, Josh, is, is I, I don't think that this group carries the, the burden of uh, 18 or 55 years. We're focused on, on the group that, that we have. A lot of them have accrued some experiences and, and some, uh, you know, falling a little short from time to time. I, I do think that this season, you know, you mentioned the regular season, but I also think the playoff series and the way that the group played was different. I didn't feel in games five, six, or seven that we were on our heels or reacting to another team uh, dictating to us the way that the game was going to go. In game five, we battled back. Game six, we battled back. In game seven, uh, I didn't feel like in the previous years where we were passive and then had to play catch up down two or three goals in the game and the game got away from us. I thought that uh, the guys came out and, and played hard and it was, it was likely the best opponent that we faced in that time. Um, and I think now more than ever, it's, it, it's looking at it that way. And I, I know that the easy thing to do would be to make bold statements or, or bold changes, but it's continued to maintain that belief at, at this time that's, that's vitally important. Yeah, thanks for Brendan. It's been a while. Um, Toronto is a hockey town and they're incredibly compassionate and sympathetic people as well. Can you put it into context when it comes to what happened with Mitch last night? Generally speaking, and what your immediate thoughts were when you when you heard the news. Well, I was I was shocked when I uh, first heard the news, as everybody was, and and immediately your first thought goes to you know, is he is he all right, and and whoever he was with, are, are they all right? Um, you know, as as the players have probably reiterated uh, many times today, we've been asked by the Toronto. Uh, police service to not speak specifically about the case. I also want to thank them for the uh, their attentiveness and the work that they do every day, but especially in this particular case. Um, so we don't want to get into those specifics, but obviously you just care for the uh, the well-being and and you you're as much as you are uh, upset that it happened. You're thankful that it wasn't worse. Kevin, uh, Kyle, in in, in previous. Playoff exits, you had any number of things go wrong, like a Nazem Kadri suspension or a John Tavares injury or Jake Muzzin injured twice. This this year was completely different. You actually got healthier, it seemed, as the playoffs went on. Um, in your mind, what would be different next year? Why the, the belief that you have in the group, why was it different if a completely healthy lineup couldn't get it done this year? Well, I, I think, Kevin, it's a, it's a fair question. I think that the team continues to grow, and though the result at the end of the year, it, it, it's hard to sit up and say because the result at the end of the year is lost in game seven of the first round. But the way that the team played in the regular season and, and in the way that we played in the series, I think was much different than those previous years, as, I, as I'd previously outlined. And that's what leads me to think that, in, and just going through these exit meetings and speaking with Sheldon right after, um, and speaking to the players right after, they know that, the, that, it's, that we're close, but they also know that the closest part and the closing part is the hardest part. And they seem, you know, only whatever it's been, 72 hours gone, they seem fully accepting and ready to embrace that more so than the other groups where there was more excuse making or looking for answers. I think they know what the answer is and it's within. And it's still a young group. If you look at the Austins, Mitches, Williams, and they're going to continue to get better and improve. And then the other part to that is it falls on me. So it falls on me to continue to find the right pieces to go around the group to improve it and push us ahead, uh, continue to adapt my approach, work with our management team, adapt our approach, and find the right pieces that can continue to move us ahead. So I think, you know, the, I know the coaching staff and the players are going to do their part, and I have to do my part. And that's what, you know, we've already got to work on the last few days and we'll get to work on in the coming uh, weeks and months. Matt? Brendan, uh, 25 years ago, you hoisted your first Stanley Cup as a player, and you were a piece that was traded to that team, sort of to put it over the top, but it required a big sacrifice at the time for Detroit, right? Paul Coffey, Keith Primo. So my question to you is, what is the piece that will put this team over the top, and will it require a similar sacrifice? 
Well, I, I don't think you can ever compare um, any one season and say like this is exactly the same situation. It's it sometimes it's it, it is a trade and sometimes it's development from within and sometimes it's just the same players going out trying the same thing and getting a different result. Um, our focus is on trying to improve. Our focus is on trying to get better. Um, regardless of what the outcome was in this year's playoffs, there are always going to be changes that are made and it's always our intention to improve as a team and to get better. Um, so I don't like to sort of specifically point to any one particular team or any one particular way of doing it. There's lots of different ways to win a cup and we have to figure out our way. And I do think that whether that is an opportunity that we feel um, we can improve our team through a trade, uh, regardless of who that player is, or if it's something within, I think we've got some good young players who are on the way up who are going to be interesting uh, players for us. And I think that the development of our people and staff that are here uh, to go out and, and sort of be determined to work harder uh, and to get a different result. Dave McCarthy. Brandon, uh, John Tavares uh, an hour or so ago talked about continuing to find ways to make the group feel uncomfortable in pursuit of, of the ultimate goal. The, the core group, extending just beyond the forwards, has been here for a number of years. You've had a number of opportunities. The results have in common. The messaging seems to be that you're going to continue to stay the course. Do you worry that, that comfort can seep into this group and maybe subconsciously or not work against the group? I, I don't think playing in any passionate hockey market uh, will allow for comfort to seep into a group. I, 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 think that if, I think if you reflect on that question, you would agree in, in your experience being around the players and the team that that's one of the greatest parts about playing in Canada and one of the greatest parts about playing in Toronto or in any great hockey market um, is, is the constant push that, look, when, when, before these guys even get to the NHL, they're absolutely driven individuals to, to make it to the NHL. But certainly when you get here and you play in a passionate hockey market, uh, I see it as an advantage. And, and I think that many of our players do too. And our players have embraced playing here in Toronto. They don't want to be anywhere else. They, they, they want to be the ones to change the narrative in Toronto, and they're committed to doing that. Steve, down front here. Yeah, the, the, I think the positive on that, Steve, is that we've gotten used to that. And, you know, last season we were faced with, um, you know, very similar exercise and, and I think this, a similar question of how are we going to improve when you have certain UFAs or, or RFAs that are coming up. Some are going to be due raises, some you're not going to be able to afford. And I think the, the answer is we, we need to replicate uh, in, in most regards the way that we operated last summer. Um, and going out and being able to find players that can come in and, um, and add to our group and do so um, at not a very high cost, but by being able to take advantage of the opportunity and flourishing. And I think that falls on to me and our player personnel department more than anybody else to go out and find those players again. So it's a challenge. And in the current environment, I think most teams that are contending, if you, I looked at one point this year and you have 17 teams, I think it was, or 18 teams at or over the cap with LTI. And, you know, with the pandemic and the effects that that's had on the game, it's always going to make that challenging. And I think it's a challenge that we embraced last summer, especially coming off the series that we did last year and the disappointment that we had then. And um, we need to replicate that again by also, but also eliminating um, any mistakes at all because the margin for error is so much smaller. So it's a, it's a challenge, one that we embrace and, and one that, you know, in the future will be judged on. Justin. Kyle, the situation around Tavares from a lineup standpoint was sort of in flux the back half of the season into the playoffs. So lots of different looks were thrown at him, line mates, so on and so forth. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, Sheldon Keefe lauded him for his flexibility just now. But there was always an understanding when he signed that deal that the latter three, two, three years could look a little bit different. So in saying that, what can you do to help maximize the, the remaining three years on the deal for Tavares and, and maybe even beyond that? Uh, you know, I, Justin, I would say that I, I view uh, my job, whether it's John or anybody else, to, to 
be giving Sheldon and be giving the players the pieces around them that are going to allow their primes to be extended as long as possible. So I, I've never gone into any long-term deal and felt that the back half uh, may be a challenge or that the player will need to adapt. I think we need to, as players age, we, we have the resources here to be able to try to help them as much as possible um, in every regard, on and off the ice, and we need to continue to do that. Uh, but also with regards to roster construction, players are going to change as they age inevitably, and we need to, uh, as a management team, be always supporting them with the pieces that are going to best allow them to maintain their primes as long as possible. So whether it's John or anybody else on our team that you would say is over that, whatever you want, I mean, different people view the prime year as a different, some would say it's 24, some would say it's 27, some would say it's 30, whatever it is, we want people that, that can come here and, and maintain that level as long as possible. And I think that's, that falls on us. And, and fair if it's too soon, but if Jason Spezza wants to come back, will there be a spot for him? That'll be a conversation that I'll, I'll have with, uh, with Jason here in the coming days and, and weeks, and, and then we'll, we'll uh, report back. Okay. Mark? Brendan, uh, last year on exit day, a lot of talk about killer instinct being missing. What, if anything, do you want your players to take away from the way this most recent series played out? Well, I think as Kyle alluded to, and as I watched and observed in our fans and uh, watched and observed as well, uh, we, in spite of the fact of not, not being able to finish Tampa off in, in game six and in game seven, I saw a different team and a different approach. I thought that in the past, uh, in the past couple of seasons when we've had an opportunity to eliminate a team, we got back on our heels. One of the things that I liked about this year's process, uh, despite the result, was that our team was on its toes. I liked their starts. I liked their comebacks. I liked the fight that they showed and the uh, the embracing of those moments, they just didn't get the job done. But the process, to me, um, what makes me feel more encouraged, doesn't take away my disappointment, but what makes me feel more encouraged was that it was a completely different approach. So we're still seeking that killer instinct, but we were doing a lot more of the things that you need to do in order to get that job done than I've seen in the past couple of uh, elimination games where I felt we looked a little bit on our heels. I thought that that was a big change. And, and it's a matter for us to keep encouraging them that when they're doing the right things, to, to not get frustrated and move away from those. And we see room and areas of improvement as well, and we will address those over the summer, and we'll address it over the course of next season. I think that's the one thing, again, that we stressed to our players when they came back this season, and was that the regular season is important. There are certain things and skills that we have to do in order to prepare ourselves for those moments when we get in the playoffs, and that'll be the same next year. The regular season's incredibly important to hone those skills and to sharpen those skills so that when we get in those moments, we're just that much uh, better. We are, you know, those small increments better that are needed in order to be on top and advancing. Josh. Just to follow up on Justin's question, if uh, Jason decides he doesn't want to play anymore, is there an interest in bringing him back in an off-ice role? I've never had a player in that position before, Josh, so it'd be my first experience really going through that. I guess we had Ron Hainsey a few years ago, but he retired. He wasn't with us. He did a little bit with us and then went to the PA. So it would be uncharted territory for, for me. Um, so I think I'll talk with Jason today. Um, I, I think it's hard to really probably in, in sitting here uh, fully describe the impact that he's had on the team positively. Um, obviously his contributions to the roster, but in the locker room in the summer, the time he puts in with uh, every single younger player from the day he's arrived, it's, uh, he's a special person. So I think there'd probably be 31 teams other than us that would have an interest in having him a part of it in some way. Um, so. Uh, I just, I don't know where, where his head will be at with, with everything, playing, not playing, working, family. So we'll, we'll sort through that first and then go from there. You, you mentioned that, um, I mean, we, we all know about the salary cap kind of crunch that you guys are under. Do you think you need more from your Marley's guys coming up, guys on ELCs next year? Yes, I, I do. Um, and I expect that we will. Um, I think not only just the, 
the players that are the the obvious ones that are that are higher picks, Josh. But also, as, as you look at the bottom of our forward lineup in particular, um, you know, guys that may not have as high a profile, but can play specific roles and provide specific elements, whether it's speed, physicality, um, you know, power and presence. So whether that's a Bobby McMahon, Curtis Douglas, Joey Anderson, players in that mold, uh, in addition to the Robertsons and and the like. Um, that's where where the focus will be for sure. And so I, you know, I met with those players yesterday, and what their opportunity is going to be in training camp was made abundantly clear what they're competing for. And we do need those players to begin converting from being good prospects and good Marlies to to good players for the Leafs. Yes, Luke, Kyle, because of uh, how the past few series have ended, and because it's a hard cap world. Do you reconsider the portion of money you're spending on uh, high-end forwards versus how much you're spending on, say, bottom six, defense, goaltending? Um, I, I think we always consider everything at the end of every season, during every season, and essentially every day, Luke. All of that said, I, I think the the contracts to those those players uh, that, that you're referencing, um, you know, I think they, they're providing us uh, – they're providing us great value for them in the way that they're producing and the way that they continue to evolve as they go through their contracts. So uh, I don't regret those uh, at all. And I just think it's the reality of the, of the league right now that you're, you're probably not going to be able to spend as much as you want on those depth pieces. And you're really going to have to do a great job finding value, whether that's someone that's coming off injury, someone that's been in, someone that hasn't been given great opportunity, someone coming off a bad year, that you think you see something in that's a fit specifically with your team that you can bring them in and help. So, um, you know, whether that's a you know, next year's edition of bunting or, or camp for what, for whatever, or Kasha, whatever different reason that they're, they're going to be a good fit. And that's, that's really where we have to focus. Um, I don't know um, that I've ever felt that it's best to detract some of your very best players to spread the dollars around players who aren't as good. Thanks. Uh, Brendan, you've worked with Kyle now, uh, I think, going on eight years or something like that. And, and Kyle, uh, you and Sheldon are kind of joined at the hip. To what degree are all these first-round failures putting a strain on those relationships, would you say? <laughs> um, there's a bunch of, yeah, you can make a lot of jokes about that, uh, you know, sleeping in separate bedrooms and things like that, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stay away from that. Uh, it's... I, I think when you go through those disappointments, as much as, as winning can bring people together, and we've, you know, for, for some of us who've been fortunate to experience that, it, it's absolutely true. I think learning how to deal with, uh, you know, the heartbreak and devastation of, of falling short, uh, depending on what kind of uh, relationship you have, can bring you close together as well. And I, I um, you know, to, to share some of those disappointments uh, not just with Kyle and, and Sheldon, but with our players who have now been here. Um, to have our fans back in the building this year, I know we had a little bit of a, um, a pause there due to uh, COVID uh, in the regular season. Um, but it, it, to see our fans and the support that they gave us and to have that back, Sheldon had mentioned after, uh, after game one that our fans were the first stars of the game. And it was something that we were all talking about uh, after that game. Uh, it was something our, our, our players were talking about. I don't know that in my time here I've ever seen, um, I've, I've ever seen and experienced in my time here where our, our players uh, feel so connected to our fans. Um, so again, you'd, you'd like to start mixing in quite soon those victories that pull you closer together. But for me, it just strengthens our resolve to support each other and get the job done. It strengthens my resolve to, uh, to give them whatever they need in order for us to get over that hump and get through that, uh, those challenges and, uh, and, and get to the place where we want to be. Kyle, same question. Yeah, I think with you know, your question lands with regards to my relationship with Sheldon, um, you know, we have worked together for you know, at, at three different levels and, and three different teams. Um, and we've won once together and, and in other seasons lost in conference finals, second rounds, and of course first rounds. Um, but I, I think the, the great value in my relationship with him is that 
we can be uh, very confrontational and challenging of one another. Um, I've always thought this, and I thought this, this is the key, and, and just in my experience between the general manager and the coach's relationship is, can you argue, can you challenge one another, can you call each other out when you think that you're below the standard that you expect from one another, uh, and not have that cause any long-term uh, issues in the relationship, and more than that, have you come back the next day and be stronger, knowing you're both going towards the same goal, and I think that's always been the way it has been with Sheldon, and uh, what and then that's why I value that relationship with him uh, as, as much as I do. Thank you. Kevin. Kyle, I wanted to ask you a very broad question about this organization's prospect pool, but connected to two very specific questions. First off, what do you think of your organization's prospect pool from the Marlies on down? And can you update us on Rodi and Imarov? And sure. whether you think uh, um, Hervonen and uh, Nimala will be playing in North America next year? Sure. Um, I'll start with the first question about the prospect pool. I think in the last several drafts, we've really added to the depth of the pool. We haven't picked particularly high. The one time we did have a high pick, you know, and I'll answer that you know, subsequently on, on Rodion and the unfortunate uh, situation there. But I think we, we feel as though these prospects are starting to push at the end of the year with, with the Marlies. Um, you know, Pontus Holmberg came over. He was a sixth round pick in 2018 and he played exceptionally well for them and we feel he'll challenge for the roster here next year. He played on the Olympic team, he's won a championship in Sweden. Um, you know, we've, we, the next year you have Robertson, he's been up and down, felt he played his best hockey at the end of the year. Then you mentioned Nimel and Hervonen, so we feel that the depth is there. We added Matthew Nyes, Ty Voigt, and uh, the goaltender Vyacheslav Pexa last year. All of them had exceptional seasons. So I'm very happy with where the amateur uh, scouting staff has taken things despite not having a lot of picks and two of the, the three drafts, really. Um, and we need, as I told the, the players yesterday that are in that mold of Marley's or below, we need them to grow together and come together quickly and expedite things to, uh, with their development uh, in order for them to help our group. That's going to be the best way that we do it. Um, with regards to Rodion, he's now back in Ufa after his first round of uh, treatment in Germany. Uh, and then he'll go back to German, uh, Germany here uh, in the next month or so for a second round of treatment. Um, and so we just cross our fingers and lots of hope and, and thought uh, with him. But it's uh, obviously been a very difficult situation because you get to know, um, you, know, you draft a player and you, know, you meet them. Uh, a month later they go, they're the top forward at, a, at the Cariala Cup. Everything is going great. They come over here, they have a great session here uh, last year at the, in the spring. And then, you know, essentially upon going back, the issues crop up, which eventually led to the diagnosis, um, which was, you know, the, the worst thing that, that you want to hear, especially when you're talking about a 19, 20-year-old uh, young athlete with so much potential that had shown that potential since, since the draft even more so. Uh, so it's, it's difficult. Uh, we just continue to support him. Uh, I am stunned with how positively he has handled the entire situation. It's really remarkable uh, for someone being dealt that. Um, how positive and optimistic he's remained, and it's it's quite inspiring. So um, it's uh, that's been that's been great to see. Um, and then finally, Hervonen and Nimella, uh, because of the transfer agreements, both have to be offered back to uh, their respective teams. So Carpat and uh, um, uh, in Helsinki. So um, that'll be that'll be the situation there, unless they make the NHL roster. And, and Brendan, one last one for you that's probably important only to the people in this room, but would you expect us to be back in the room? You talk about relationships. Would you expect us to be getting our one-on-ones back in the dressing room next season? Oh, I, 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 I hope so. I hope so, Kevin. I, I, I think that if, if, if everyone's back in the room, that would be a good sign, not just you know for, for the hockey world, but for the community at large. So I think things like that will be discussed with the National Hockey League. And uh, for me, again, it, the closer we as a community can get back to normal and having full buildings and getting back to doing what we used to do and love um, and having those relationships is important. I hope so. Mike. Yeah, for both uh, Brennan and Kyle, there, there's a doomsday clock as it pertains to Austin Matthews and a contract that's going to be coming up in 2024. How concerned are you that you're now down to essentially a two-year window to not only just win a round but to win the whole thing? I I certainly don't view it as a doomsday clock. We we're fortunate to have one of the best players in hockey under contract for two more years and 
Um, beyond that, he's a great player that we'd like to see play his whole career with Toronto, and he wants to win more than anybody. So he's he's on board with that and every discussion that, that we have with, uh, with him, and that's our focus is building the best team possible to take advantage of having players of that uh, that caliber, Mike. Do you not have to show more? I didn't. I didn't. That's a question for Austin more than it is for, for me and what he, what he and, and his representatives are, are looking for in a team. I think in my conversations with him, he believes that we're close. I think he said that to everybody here, and uh, he's going to be a big part of, of helping us get there as he, continues to, as he continues to grow and evolve. I agree with Kyle. I, I think that Austin uh, has embraced being a Maple Leaf. Um, He's had historical seasons here in, uh, in, in what is still the early part of his career. Uh, he's got a lot of runway left. Um, we love having him, and I agree with Kyle. We'd love to make him a Leaf forever. Um, and uh, he's been very supportive, um, and he's, he's really sort of grown into a leadership role here. He's, uh, you know, he's made, obviously, an immediate impact as a young player, as a rookie. Um, but he's grown into a man, and he's, he's just been fantastic for us in, in every asset, on the ice and off the ice in the dressing room. Mark. Kyle, this was uh, Jack's first time in this role that, in his career in the NHL. What did you learn about Jack Campbell this season? I think the – I mean, it's been a great story. Um, you know, certainly he came over in 2020, um, was sort of splitting the backup role or getting ready to do so in L.A. with, with Cal Peterson, came here – uh, was excellent for us in that stretch, and then last year became the starter uh, midway through the year uh, when Fred got injured and played well against Montreal, and this year obviously had the great start. I think the thing that I learned most about him, Mark, this year was not the great start and becoming an all-star. It, it was, maybe it wasn't learning, it was reaffirming something that I had always known about Jack Campbell is that when it doesn't go well and things are hard, I find you, you learn so much about people in, in those instances, but the most valuable thing in our role, and I think as an athlete, especially um, at the highest level of athletics, is when things don't go well, can you find a way to get them back on track? And you know, right after the All-Star break there, he had that lull in his performance, and then you know, he got the injury after the game in Columbus, and then came back from that to working with Steve and, and the coaching staff, and, and put together, you know, was great down the stretch, and then played very well for us in the playoffs. So uh, I, I guess I re reaffirmed things that, that you know about Jack Campbell and his ability to you know, start the year great, deal with a stretch of poor uh, form, find his way back, and then stabilize himself and be ready for when the team needs him. Well, Steve, down your front. I, I can't. I, it hasn't necessarily crossed my mind at, at this point, Steve. And I think you know my my reason for that is uh, my belief in Sheldon and and the job that he's done here so far. Um, but also that I, I only think Sheldon's going to continue to get better. And I think when we speak of Sheldon in 10, 15 years from now, it'll be in the same way that you just spoke of those two great coaches. And um, you know, I think. That'll be played out here in Toronto. Matt? Kyle, when we've had these discussions at the end of seasons in the past, I know you've been pretty adamant about keeping the core of the team together. I won't say core four, but just core in general. Sure. So are you willing to reinforce that position? Has it, has it stayed the same, or are you sort of open-minded to thinking of it differently now? I, I think I'll just reiterate, Matt, my, my previous answer on it, which was I... I don't, again, I don't view it just as a four. I view the, the core of the group as much larger than that, and it's my job at the end of every year to evaluate whether we can improve the team. Uh, and if there's a way to improve the team, which involves uh, someone who me or you or, or anyone would, in, would constitute as the core, it's my job to investigate that and determine whether it, it will make us a better team in the short run, long run, 
and then whether we want to do that. So that's the way that we'll, we'll handle the off season. I, I, maybe I've felt in previous gatherings like this that it needed to be more adamant because of the way that uh, things had gone or, or different uh, circumstances around some of the players at those times. But the way that I, I'll approach it is to, we'll sit down as a management group, look at our whole entire roster, similar to the question Steve just asked, look at who's available, what can we bring in, uh, and our whole goal is going to be to make the team better. So different may gain some applause and some and um, uh, some accolades because it's different, but if it's not better, then we're going to have a better chance of sitting here disappointed again. So um, everything that we do will be geared towards improving the group, uh, and, and we'll look at everything possible to do that. Thanks, gentlemen, and thanks, everybody, for coming today. Have a good day.